today we need to get into V talking about betrayal in a recent interview. We need to get into people saying that V was changing into the clothes of his lover at his apartment. And then we need to get into sugar in the sauna. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hater or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Make sure you join us fangirling on Patreon and let's go. Recently, there was an interview that shocked people as a celebrity or fellow friend of Suga sort of exposed Suga in a sauna, and that was actually a very cute moment. This was Suga's friend named Park Ming Su, and Ming Su is a comedian and he hosts talk shows. So, this is how Suga actually met him, I believe. Now, there was an episode called Wife's Taste, which is an interesting show that I'm not going to get into today. Not a bad thing, just a unique concept of Korean couples looking for a small life. On this show, Ming, Park Ming Su actually revealed that his daughter. Ran into Suga. So apparently, Ming Su ran into Suga upstairs at a sauna. I'm assuming this was a spa, and then he told Suga that his daughter was downstairs. Later, Suga went downstairs and ran into Ming Su's daughter. Apparently, the daughter was so overwhelmed after seeing Suga, she fainted. Now, I don't know how old she was, but this is what happens or what could happen when you meet an idol. And this serves as an example to maybe not meet your idol because it's not healthy to faint. Apparently, Ming Su's daughter had always dreamt of meeting Suga, and Suga was her bias. And I'm wondering if Suga was shirtless or that was another reason why she fainted or if he was fully clothed. Because I could definitely see someone fainting after seeing Suga shirtless. Now this story is crazy because a little while ago Ming Su mentioned during his radio show that he had run into a BTS member during a sauna session. Now for some reason some people thought it would be Jin. I don't know why but I also thought Jin too. Like I guess sauna feels more like something the eldest would do but honestly any of the members could do it. But this is one of those mysteries that the community likes to wonder who he was talking about. And now we know. Others think it was said for the sake of cloud chasing but the likelihood of it being fake now is a little bit less because he would have had to have remembered that he had mentioned this on his radio show a little while ago. And I mean, he still could, but now there's a chance that it's real because when it's real, you don't really have to actively try to remember it because it's just what happened. And it was funny because at the time, I don't think they knew each other and Ming Su couldn't believe that Suga had come out of the sauna, mainly because the sauna is so mundane and they didn't think that Suga would be there. However, funny enough, Ming Su ended up holding up a picture of Suga on his phone and putting it up to Suga's face just to compare and see that it actually was Suga, which is so odd to do that because imagine Imagine meeting a celebrity and then holding up a photo with your phone. That celebrity would have felt so odd and surreal. It's so interesting to hear so much about the BTS members, even though they're literally not active. Because why on earth is there so much going on with the members, even though they literally haven't been around? I'm not complaining. I'm actually very happy. But just why? Funny enough, there was a very interesting campaign interview or promo that was done with V recently that did have a lot of people talking because it revealed a lot of things. Now, if you don't know, V didn't just do a photo shoot with W Korea before he left and for his original album, but he also did one for the new song before. Before he left and there's a lot of stuff that is being rolled out now. There's a bunch of interviews that were done and a lot of those interviews were translated from Korean to English so that is nice. One particular interview he was speaking in English and says but once it crossed the line there's an I you and I can never turn around. A lot of people think in this context he's referring to his haters and it's a bit of an angry or an emotional statement towards those that have betrayed him. For me personally, I think this statement is a direct message maybe to his sasings, a message to say that those who have potentially entered his apartment elevator and handed him marriage papers are people that will never be forgiven and they can't go back now to how it was before i.e. admiring him from a distance because now they will be in jail. In the interview, he obviously talks about his solo album and talks about how it was very satisfying a promotion as he feels like if someone enjoys music, they will likely enjoy that album. And I agree. There's a lot of artistic elements to that album and I think someone who does enjoy art or specifically listen to music for the art rather than just entertainment are going to love it. The music video and the message of each song, which is very different, are all things that people can break down and take things from. He also talks about how every song on the album and likely Friends too contains a special part of his life and his own experiences in there. So these songs are not only good and catchy but also very personal. And he says something interesting which is that he would prefer people not discuss the music as an album and then just like rate the album but more so rate the individual songs which is something I don't think I've heard anyone say before. Now 
Friends was an interesting situation because the song was supposed to be part of his solo album, but he opted against that and thought it would be best for the song to be released as a solo song. And that song definitely sounds like it could fit into the album. He doesn't specify, or maybe I didn't hear, exactly what that means and why he felt like it didn't fit into the album. So what I think happened is just that he felt the other songs were stronger, or maybe the label just didn't feel Friends was the best and ultimately led it to it being released as a solo project. It also was something that was going to be beneficial to V because as the community has nothing to listen to and the other members aren't releasing anything, it will keep V top of mind to everyone. And all the members mentioned BTS and their bandmates so much that as long as one of them is making music, it'll push BTS tremendously. Of course, no matter what, there's always so many rumors that happen with any release or anytime anything happens. There were some clips that were coming out where people were talking about V and his friend Wushik. This is a close friend of V and there's a lot of moments of them together. Wushik is part of the Wuga squad and there's moments in Genie's Kitchen and many of the shows V did before he left. If you do want to react to those moments with me, make sure you check us out on Patreon. I'll leave a link at the top of the description. We react to these shows and fangirl over it over there and it's a lot of fun. I hope to see you there. There was one particular clip where we see Wushik in and V in a car together, and V mentioned that they were both wearing the same clothes. People were mostly joking, but there was definitely a lot of people that thought a real dating rumor could likely occur from this. Now, if you're unfamiliar, dating rumors happen when two people wear similar clothes or even dress alike. However, this is funny because this can also happen to people who are friends that happen to live together. It sounds weird when it's two guys sharing clothes just because society doesn't normalize that, but these two guys are both celebrities whose jobs are to look good, in which case they might decide to share their wardrobe because they want to change up their look and appear new and fresh on camera. There was also another moment that people were talking about where V was just putting on Wushik's clothes in the apartment or house, and people caught this moment and posted it all over Twitter. I think people tend to think too much, although others were really happy over the idea that if a dating rumor were to occur, it should occur with V and Wushik as they are both so close and Wushik treats V so nicely. But I want to add this because I think this is something that not a lot of people know and not a lot of people are aware of that is actually a big issue in real life. When celebrities get shipped together with their friends, it can actually damage the celebrity's personal life in a very extreme way. So for the first few years, it might even be fine, but then if a specific celebrity actually does decide to date another person, not only will that new person now face death threats and all of the things that we can expect they face for quote unquote ruining the ship, but there's more or less obvious things. For instance, the actual new partner could get jealous. They could go rewatch all old content and due to all the opinions online, realize, oh, it does seem like my partner's best friend is in love with him. And then guess what? That friendship ends because nine times out of 10, people pick their partner over their friends. And this happens more often that most people would think. Now, a big factor of this is what the public is saying about the two and how the two must be dating. Because if those rumors didn't exist, I couldn't see that thought would even occur to the new partner because the likelihood of the new partner watching every little show or whatever their partner had been a part of is less likely, but they might go watch it with a bias already in mind if it's mentioned to them or if it's this big rumor. Because people also tend to think that if a rumor is made, there must be some truth to it. But in K-pop, there often isn't any. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. I'll link down below. Thanks for this little bit comment right here. Love you. Bye.